Hello everyone, today we're going to take a quick look at Alita Battle Angel, directed by Robert Rodriguez and starring Rosa Salazar, Christoph Waltz, and Mahershala Ali. Alita takes place on a future version of Earth where the remains of some kind of android are found in a junkyard by Dr. Ito. So he takes what's left of her home, builds her a new body, and basically raises her as his daughter. With her memory mostly gone, apart from brief flashes here and there, Alita proceeds to learn all about this new world she finds herself in, along with her own hidden talents and the secrets of her past. I got a pass to an early screening for this movie, and I went in not knowing what in the hell I should expect. I hadn't read the manga or seen the OVA, I knew nothing about this character, and basically all I got from the trailer was Uncanny Valley the movie. And it turns out Alita Battle Angel is not half bad. Essentially, it's a YA dystopian story like Divergent, except, you know, good. Your main character is a teenage girl, in a manner of speaking, at least she kind of has the personality of one, even though she may actually be a 200-year-old warrior robot from another planet. You know, your typical 16-year-old. And she meets a boy who apparently has no problem with the fact that she's a robot. Okay, then. Can you fuck it? Can you fuck it? But despite that weirdness, their relationship does actually have its charm. I thought Alita was a fun character. She starts out very sweet and innocent, but slowly morphs into a confident and deadly warrior. Salazar's mocap performance was very well done, and honestly, the whole Uncanny Valley thing with those big old anime eyes wasn't really anywhere near as disturbing as I thought it would be after watching the trailer. Honestly, after a few minutes, I was used to it. Kian Johnson plays her love interest Hugo, and those two play off each other very well, and they actually have, honest to God, depth. So often in these YA stories, either the hero or the love interest is just bland as all hell, and that's really not the case here. Waltz plays Alita's surrogate father, Dr. Ito, and I don't really need to tell you he's great in this movie because he's Christoph fucking Waltz. He's great in everything. And Ali is great as the sinister, but admittedly very silly named villain, Vector. Not Victor, Vector. What's our Vector, Victor? We have Clarence Clarence. Visually, it looks fantastic. My screening was shown in IMAX 3D, and I can see why they chose that format, because that's really the format this movie needs to be seen in. And the action sequences are a ton of fun. This movie has one of the better bar fights I have seen, and of course the extremely brutal sport of motorball was a trip and a half. It is not a perfect movie by any means. This movie has a lot packed into just two hours. They crammed, I think, three different volumes of the manga into one movie, and it kind of shows. It feels less like one big story and more like a collection of short stories that were kind of Frankenstein together, and Alita just bounces from plotline to plotline. One moment, she's a normal teenage girl, except, you know, robot. Then all of a sudden, she's a bounty hunter. Then she's a motorballer. Then she's the savior of the universe, who will apparently save it by playing motorball. Saving the world through sports. Sure. I suppose it's no less silly than Ready Player One, saving the world through video games. But unlike Ready Player One, I actually like the hero. And there's a bit of futuristic sci-fi silliness, like some of the character names. Vector. And apparently, in this movie's story, many years prior, the Earth was invaded by the Martian Technarchy. What the fuck is a Technarchy? I don't know. I don't think the movie knows either, and it doesn't seem to care. I know it's futuristic and science fiction and all that, but that doesn't mean you just have to make up nonsense words. That's so not shway. But overall, I did have a lot of fun with it, and I'm looking forward to the sequel that the end of this movie is clearly hinting at. If nothing else, it did make me want to read the manga. And if you decide to see this movie, I recommend doing so on the biggest screen possible, because that is clearly what this movie was made for. And that's about all I have to say about Alita Battle Angel. Till next time, take care.